Welcome to the Seniors Rock Show, presented by the Law Office of Michael Robinson, PC, on News Radio, Wham 1180. The Seniors Rock Show, a lively weekly discussion, shedding a bright light on aging with fun, entertainment, and important info for all adults. Join in with your comments or questions. Call or text 222-1180 or 1-800-295-1180. Now from the News Radio Wham 1180 studio in downtown Rochester, here's your host, Joanna Palvino. Welcome to the show. I'm Joanna, your host for the next hour. Thank you so much for joining us. And Mike Robinson is here too. Every week he's here contributing to the show. He's one of the best estate planning attorneys around, and he also makes a heck of a good co-host. So enjoy the show with us today. And Mike's firm, by the way, is the law office of Michael Robinson. They've been helping families protect your hard-earned assets with customized estate plans for over 36 years. That seems like a long time and he's learned a lot. So estate planning gets real and more top of mind as we age. So we're really fortunate to have an attorney like Mike on the show every week to keep us up on the latest news and answer questions from you, the listeners. And we are all aging. You know, that's one thing that's for sure. And if you have an aging parent or loved one, uh, today's show will be of special interest to you, I think. And um, if you're a caregiver, you're not alone. And if you can relate right now um, to any of these things I'm saying, you might consider, uh, you might find yourself, I'm sorry, start that over. And if you can't relate right now, you might find yourself in a caregiving role someday. So it's definitely worth a listen. I don't think today's guest saw her life-changing role to caregiving coming, but Robin DeWind handles it with class and grace, just like she reported the news to us in her former life as a television reporter and anchor. Today, Robin will tell us her personal story and how her world was changed since leaving TV. And uh, Robin's still telling stories for others, don't worry. And in fact, she has her own business. It's called RDW Group, and uh, she's doing that now for other people. Um, but today, it's her turn to talk. We're going to give her the mic, and you won't want to miss her candid interview with us in the second half of the show. Mike, you do storytelling in your estate planning webinars. You have to know the characters and their roles and that storytelling. I like the way you use family examples in your classes and your webinars to show how things can change over the years because it makes it real. You give them names. I mean, it really helped me. So it's really good information, folks, told in a way that's easy to understand in stories. All of us have a story, don't we? And I want to say happy Saturday, Mike. Thanks for how you uh, present those webinars and ha thanks for all the education you've given me the and the listeners. Oh, well, thank you, Joanna, and happy Saturday to you as well. And yeah, we do use stories in the in the webinar. In fact, I often use stories even on the one-on-one -on -one consultations I have with folks. You know, as humans, we're, we're wired to respond to stories, and mm -hmm. we've been telling each other stories since we acquired language however many thousands of years ago. So it it's a I find it's a great way to to convey information because it is engaging it captures people's interest and and a good story can in a way that that maybe other methods don't don't really achieve a good story can really convey ideas and information um, in a way that resonates with people and that stays with them uh, because as you say there's there's people attached to it and there's uh, that, that everyone can relate to. So yeah, stories uh, are important, I think, in conveying information. And, uh, you know, of course, estate planning can be a rather dry topic if uh, if we're just sort of going down bullet points and, and such. So uh, stories is also a way to keep people engaged and, and make sure they're paying attention. And you actually throw a little comedy into those uh, routines you do. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You are, you know, it's educational and it is serious topic, but you managed to make it enjoyable. I have to say that because I remember the, you know, I've been to a few of them and I remember laughing and, you know, people just uh, relate to the things that you say and you don't make it all, you know, real clinical and all about the laws. You make it about people. 
And that's so that's the cool thing, and I think that's what really makes you stand out from other people. Sure, and you're right. I mean, it's certainly serious information, and an information that has serious consequences if it's not dealt with. But there's no reason not to have fun, to keep it light when it's appropriate, and and again, that's just another way to keep people engaged, and um, and not put them to sleep. Yeah, and. You know, these things are so important and they're one of the things, you know, we talk about on the show is that sometimes we don't want to talk about or think about things that happen, you know, later in life. But again, we're all getting older. So, you know, it's either us or our parents or someone we love that might be going through things. And, you know, sharing these things on the air, uh, people asking questions or Mike answering their questions is helping so many people. It's not just you. So um, we're all in it together and we hope that you enjoy Uh, the information that we bring to you and some of the fun and remind you to have fun. And that's the whole point of this show. And our sponsors are responsible for bringing it to you. So I want to thank them as many times as I can. And Mike, you're a sponsor and so are the other uh, folks that you're going to hear during the program today. So um, have you gotten any questions lately? Well, you know, one, just because we're talking about stories, this was actually not a question, but to your earlier point about how we you know, it, it, it may not be pleasant, and it's something that we oftentimes put off until tomorrow when we talk about estate planning. Uh, I can share a quick story that uh, I just came across this week. I was contacted uh, by a, a woman whose uh, husband now is in advanced stages of Alzheimer's, and uh, they are in their 70s, and they had, according to, to uh, the woman I, I met with, they have been talking about getting their estate planning together for something like 20 years, but have done nothing. Yeah, it goes by quick, though. I can say that. It does. And now, you know, we're helping them mm-hmm. and, and we will ultimately have a, a good result. But I will tell you, it is extremely stressful for that family. Um, it's not going to be nearly as good an outcome as if we had planned uh, ahead of time. So once again, I encourage people. And as I've said before, Joanna, we're very fortunate. We have so many excellent estate planning attorneys in the Rochester area. Um, you know, there's no reason not to, to, to meet with someone, make sure that your specific needs are being addressed because uh, again, just one more example of procrastination and the dire consequences. It, it has on the family. Yeah, and you see it all the time. And thank you for reminding us. And yeah, that's a it's it's a bad thing procrastination when it comes to these uh, important issues. And it could be again about you, about your family. And uh, it's always good to be prepared, right? And we're going to share some tips later in the show about what you can look for when you're visiting an older loved one. And you know, maybe you've got some concerns about their well-being or their safety. And um, you really have to do a little snooping and how to snoop in a way that won't upset them. So Seniors Rock Radio is going to be coming up after the break. And we're going to talk to you about being a little bit of a snoop dog yourself. And it's all for the good. And uh, you don't have to go in and, you know, uh, check everything in front of someone and embarrass them and and make them unsettled. Um, There are ways to do it. And I think um, in the next segment, Mike, we're going to give some tips. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. So stay with us, folks. We'll be back right after this break here on Wham 1180. Hi, Mike Robinson here. We've all seen a lot of changes this past year. One thing that hasn't changed in over 35 years at the law office of Michael Robinson is our commitment to protect you and your family from nursing home expense, probate, and taxes. Let us guide you and your family in creating a custom-crafted estate plan to protect your legacy. Call us at 374-5210 or visit us at mrobinsonlaw.com. Welcome back. This is the Seniors Rock Show. I'm attorney Mike Robinson here with Joanna Pelvino. And right before the break, we were we were talking about, um, you know, how, how many children go in go in with the blinders on, so to speak, when they're visiting their older parents. And they they just sort of don't don't look at, at the signs that something might be amiss. They don't address unpaid bills or the piles of mail because they don't want to embarrass the elder. Or, or again, sometimes it's just they don't want to face it and it's an act of denial. 
It's true, Mike. And I read recently, you've got to be Snoopy. You've got to be like a journalist and do it without upsetting your parents. Here are some of the tips that we gathered um, that would allow for some concerned snooping without detection. And the first one is simple. Go to the refrigerator and look in there. Say you're getting a drink or something and find out if the food is fresh. Don't, um, you know, hesitate to take a peek in there. And uh, that can tell you if things are getting bad. Um, you know, that's not a good sign. Yep. Yeah, look in the cabinets, too. See if the use-by dates are, are still valid. And, oh, Joanna, I've been guilty of that one, uh, finding uh, finding spices that expired <laughs> three years They're ago. They're the worst. Yeah. They're the worst. And, you know, John uh, teases me. There's a commercial on TV and, and they say they have an ant problem and there's an ant Bonnie who's always looking and throwing things out. Well, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like crazy about it. You know, if something's like two days over and he'll remind me, you know, when we were kids, we ate things. We never had an expiration day. We didn't know. But in this case, it's a way to tell if someone isn't paying attention. I mean, if it's way past the date or if it's looking bad. Not good. And, and that goes for medications, too. So check the bathroom and, uh, you know, look in the medicine cabinet. Are the, are the bottles of medicine, um, are they up to date? Are they expired? Are your parents being compliant about taking their medications? Is there a whole bottle there when they had them since, you know, for three months? And, and that's a big deal. And, you know, it can be difficult. So once you identify these things, you know, the next question is, well, what do you do about it? And, you know, some elders will be more receptive than others. Um, we have great resources available. If, if there's a dementia situation, the Alzheimer's Association has tips on how to bring these, these matters up. Um, Lifespan. Also, uh, one of our sponsors, a wonderful resource in our community. So you want to be careful in order to be effective in addressing these with the elder and not do it in a way that somehow diminishes them. Mm -hmm. That's true. And there's ways to keep them safe. And there's some simple ways, too. Um, I'll mention putting nightlights. Get some little nightlights. They're not expensive and put them up and down the hallway. And uh, take the throw rugs out. Those are dangerous and they, they can cause anyone to trip or fall. But an, an older person, uh, you know, it has has sometimes maybe sight issues or dementia issues. And those tripping rugs are not good things. And um, so take those away. And do you know, Mike, that sometimes people with um, dementia will see a dark colored rug and think of it as a hole. I mean, it's confusing to them. They get afraid. So uh, there's little things like that that you can do. Sure, sure. And, you know, as we've talked about, sometimes, too, you do have to have some maybe unpleasant conversations, but important to understand the elders' wishes on, on a number of, of items. You know, just a couple of examples. Do they want to be an organ donor? Um, what, what are their desires in terms of, um, you know, life support, whether it's, it's you know, mechanical respiration, tube feeding, uh, uh, cardiac resuscitation. These are conversations certainly the elders should be having with their primary care physician as well. Mm -hmm. And how about is your estate plan up to date? Yeah, that's a good conversation to have also. Do you have a will? Yeah. Do you have a trust? Do you have have those health care directives? Do you have a, a good, solid, durable power of attorney? There's, um, you know, just so many things that, that really need to be addressed so that when someone does reach the stage where they can't act for themselves because of either mental incapacity or ultimately they have passed away. You want to make sure your family is, is going to be easily able to handle what needs to be handled at that time and ideally without court intervention. Yes. And, and there's other hard questions to ask. You do that all the time in your business, but you know, some people have a hard time and things like, you know, burial preferences. There's a lot of options today. And uh, those things, you know, I think the more you think about it, the more you talk about it, the easier it gets. And I'll also say that when when the, when the your parents are a little bit younger, it's a better time to ask the questions. And um, it also helps you to know about your family, for your own family and for your own history and your own, you know, health uh, and so on. If it gets to the point where they can't remember or you don't have access to those records, you won't know for your own family to pass that information down. And some of it could be very important, right? Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I know one of uh, one of the people we work with quite often, Rockbox Studios, has a um, has a service where where you can interview 
um, a family member and, and get that life story mm-hmm. before it vanishes because that stuff's precious. Yeah, that's called Legacy Cast, and uh, Rock's, Rock Vox does a great job of that. They've got a very uh, tech studio r- waiting here for you, so check that out, folks, if you'd like to um, – Tell your family's story or tell one of your elders' story or just tell anyone's story. This is the place to do it. And thanks for bringing that up. You know, and, and just to something you mentioned earlier about, um, you know, planning for the end, a lot of people may not be aware of, of a document that you can execute. It's an authorization regarding disposition of remains. And oftentimes within a family, there is disagreement, even though mom or dad may say, you know, when I'm gone, this is what I want. I may do I maybe an internment, uh, a traditional burial. It may be cremation, it may be something different. And if there are different family members who maybe for whatever reasons don't agree with that, it can cause some conflict. And not only is it a problem from a relationship standpoint, but it's it's just a practical problem as well. But you actually can, Joanna, authorize someone um, to be in charge of that. And uh, upon presentation of that document to the funeral director, that's who the funeral director is going to be taking directions from. And it's, um, you know, it's always important to have the conversation with the family. But again, especially if you know there could be some disagreement, mm-hmm. that's an important document. Absolutely. And, you know, there is a lot of cremation and you want to know where that's going because I've heard some stories too where people are finding, you know, remains that were taken by someone in the family and no one knew where they were and then they, they show up in an attic. So those are important things to say. You know, becoming the parent to your parent doesn't always feel comfortable because those are not the roles you knew when you grew up, the, the, your whole life. This is the person that always had the answers for you and you always went to. So now your hero needs help and you may have to help them know what to wear, where to live, what to do next. It's an emotional roller coaster for everybody. Boy, it sure can be. And so I think, you know, the moral of the story, Joanna, is talk to your parents ahead of time about their future so you can be as prepared as possible. And speaking of caregivers and talking to uh, to elders, we're going to be back right after the break with Robin DeWind in the next half of Seniors Rock Radio. Stay right there. This is the Seniors Rock Radio Show. Our guest, Robin DeWind, joined us every evening for 28 years reporting the news, over a decade of which was spent as a medical reporter. Today, she's a real-life medical reporter. And before I explain what I mean by that, I'll mention that Robin now owns her own company, RDW Media Group specializes in bringing your brand to life through the creation of compelling stories. And, you know, Robin knows her craft very well and works hard for her clients, but that's just her day job. Like so many women, Robin has several roles. She'll proudly tell you she's a solopreneur, a mom of a college-bound daughter, and the primary caregiver for her 90-year-old mother who was diagnosed with Lewy body dementia just three years ago. Robin has learned the reality of being a caregiver by being thrust into the role, like so many of us, unexpectedly. And she's humbly agreed to tell us more about it. So welcome to the Seniors Rock Radio Show, Robin DeWind. Thank you so much, Joanne. It's so great to be here. I appreciate having me on. And Robin, can you give us some background about your mom and her diagnosis? Well, my mom... um, ironically was my caregiver um, up until my daughter was 10. Uh, In many ways, she was always still my caregiver. She supported me throughout my career and uh, was really the rock of our family. And we did start noticing some changes, which I think is you get into your 80s, but it was the spring before COVID. So um, we started noticing just some dramatic behavior changes uh, hallucinations, um, beyond forgetfulness. I think a lot of us get caught up in, uh, oh, mom forgot this, mm-hmm. or mom can't remember that, or um, dad's, you know, getting confused. This was very um, dramatic. Mm-hmm. And we ended up taking her to her primary care doctor. We had an MRI, and she was diagnosed with a form of dementia called Lewy body dementia, which is a double whammy for those in the audience. It is Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. So the hallucinations were what um, were attached to the Parkinson's. And when they do an MRI, they can see that on the brain. So 
it's a, a very difficult form um, of Alzheimer's. Robin Williams was diagnosed with it at a very young age, so there's marked depression attached to it, along with the hallucinations and um, all of that. So uh, the medication, though, was, was wonderful. It, it really maintained her for quite a while. We were actually very fortunate that throughout COVID, obviously the concerns of just her safety and her health, that you know she was not in the nursing home. We were able to kind of manage her um, daily, but not super hands-on throughout COVID. It's now three years into the diagnosis that we're you know struggling with. She needs a lot more care mm-hmm. because obviously her symptoms have progressed. Wow, what a, what a challenge to have uh, during a pandemic or any time during your life. And I believe, I think this is true, the Louis body also is very confusing, uh, Robin, because one day they seem okay and the next day it's it's a disaster. Is that true? Did you have that experience? And I guess I'll just ask, what was the caregiving experience? What's it, what's it been like for you? You know, uh, humbling. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it's the Louis body is a blessing and a curse because they come back to you. And they not only come back to you, they come back to yeah. themselves. So they are very lucid and understand mm-hmm. there's something wrong with them. Whereas so it gives with you Alzheimer's, hope, it's right? very progressive. Mm-hmm. It, it gives you a lot of false hope. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's difficult for them because when they do come out and have those moments, they know something's wrong with them. And I think our blessing was my mother was 87 when she was diagnosed. She had a very full life. And, you know, she was at an elderly age. And it, I can't imagine having this diagnosis at a younger age in the case of like Robin Williams. I mean, he was still only 65 years old. So it's a um, really, really difficult diagnosis. And in those moments, even, even today at 90, when she does come out of it, she remembers um, that I'm her. She doesn't really remember that I'm her daughter. But she's, my favorite thing that she says is, I don't know who you are, but I know that I love you. Oh, that's, oh, that's awesome. wonderful. I have learned to love that statement. When mm-hmm. it first came out, it was very difficult for me, you know, mm-hmm. to, to know that she doesn't know that I'm her daughter. She thinks I'm a, an aid worker or just a neighbor or something. But I've learned to love what she says when I, she says it. It me. sounds like a story to me. I, I, I'm thinking this could be a, a children's book with that. You know, a, a beautiful <laughs> yeah, memory, absolutely. really, you know. Yeah, it's a, it, yeah. What, what a sweet thing to remember and, and to think about. That's good. And, uh, yes. you know, you are now um, really, I guess, going down the rabbit hole with all of the things that you have to deal with. And uh, I think Mike had a question about that. Well, I was just going to ask because, you know, you, you need so many services with with this sort of a diagnosis. What have been the challenges for you in just navigating the system and, and coordinating those services? Well, I think a lot of people's reaction is mom will just go to a nursing home uh, or mom will have at-home care. And both require a lot of uh, hoops. Obviously, the system has dramatically changed because of COVID. There's just no staff. Um, you know, workers aren't truly you know, compensated. And if you do, you know, mm-hmm. get help, it's extremely expensive. And my parents were extremely blue collar. My mom has been widowed since she was 59. Um, so that was a major income stream that was not available to her. So we ended up moving her from Medicare to Medicaid to get services. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with her diagnosis comes a lot of uh, different side effects, one of them being incontinence. There's a lot of just hands-on care she needs, but she's actually very healthy and she's mobile. But, mm-hmm. you know, she needs somebody there to help her. So we moved her to Medicaid to get services, and that was an extremely long process. Oh, and, yeah. Um, I always say to people in the system, don't talk in acronyms. Mm-hmm. Everybody talks in acronyms, and I'm signing paperwork to an acronym. I don't even know what I'm signing. Mm. Um, and, you know, I became one of her caregivers to start getting her hours. Um, and it's it's finding help, and it's finding people, you know, willing – to work, to come into the house. And, and it's a trust. It's, you're turning your mother's life over to a stranger. Sure. Um, and like, we've been very lucky. It took us eight months. We did find two, a mother and a daughter, actually. So great. it's kind of funny. Oh, no, that's <laughs> I have a mother great. and daughter helping me as a daughter care for my mother. But it, it's a, it's a, you meet a lot of really wonderful people that are in the system as well, trying to help you with the system. Yeah. So it's not a people issue. It's just sort of a, 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 a quagmire system of, of trying to get get to the services to help mm-hmm. your loved one. And that can be very frustrating when you have a full-time job and mm-hmm. you have children and you're trying to um, do all the things of daily life. 
while trying to get them the services they need. I have a brother who helps me tremendously. So it's kind of him and I uh, in the thick of it. And (laughs) And you need that support. We're going to have to wrap it up. There's so many things I want to ask you, but I will ask something that I think most people will wonder. How do you manage the stress? Do you have any tips for people juggling all these roles, Robin? I think just talk to your people. I think shows, um, you know, like Seniors Rock Radio is wonderful reading and it it was difficult in the beginning to share her diagnosis Mm -hmm. and then once i would open up about it somebody would say oh my gosh i have that too my mom is going through this or my dad went through that and you really do need to lean on your people yeah and you know you're going to have really terrible days but you're going to have some really life-changing days and um i have been more i'm a better uh caregiver better daughter um better mother as a result of this diagnosis so but that took time it is a journey and to be patient with yourself because um you can only do what you can do thank you so much for joining us robin and for sharing your story and being so candid it's amazing um and you are amazing our best wishes our prayers go out to you and your mom and we wish you every success in your career tell listeners real quick how to reach you and then we're going to go to break uh, rdwmediagroup.com. I create video content, so I take all my, my work that I did in television for years, and I help small clients message their business. And obviously, once in a while, you still see me on TV doing commercial work for certain clients. So living a good life on my own terms. So yeah, I absolutely. recommend it for anyone. And it, it really gave me the opportunity to, to, to take on this new role you as, go. A, as a caregiving daughter. We're so proud of you. You go, and thank you for joining Grape, too. We're going to be, all be there for you. And uh, folks, stay. Oh, great group of people. Like I said, reach out and meet new people because th- there, is, there is a village out there to help. There is. More good news next on Seniors Rec Radio right after this short break. When you've lost movement, flexibility, strength, or balance, traveling a long distance for physical therapy seems like a bad decision. That's why Agape Physical Therapy has a convenient location near you, east side or west side. And there's a new location in Pittsburgh with Aqua Therapy. Let Agape Physical Therapy and wellness professionals customize a treatment program for you to help you recover quickly. Visit agapephysicaltherapy.com and schedule your free consultation today. No doctor referral needed. Welcome back to Seniors Rock Radio. Joanna, another show has gone by. Yeah, one hour. It goes by like five minutes. Boy, it does. It does. And Great information from Robin DeWind. And uh, I'm still just so thankful for her to o- for opening up. She was a public figure for a long time, and, uh, and that doesn't happen often. So uh, she's a very generous woman. It was generous and it and is generous. And you're right. A lot of, a lot of times people are embarrassed to talk about that or maybe not embarrassment even, but just they feel it's a private family thing. Mm-hmm. And yet... It's such a service to all of us to hear from someone who's going through that experience. Um, you know, it, 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 especially folks who are in a caregiving role, it's a reminder they're not alone. There are resources out there. There's other people who are dealing with the same thing. And it, I just think that's very helpful. And there are a lot of caregivers out there of all ages, and it's going to get uh, that number is going to rise over the next 20 years, especially with the baby boomers getting older. So um, I always like to remind people to encourage younger people to pay attention to aging, get into geriatric fields. Um, it's needed just like all the other things that we need. And uh, and this is, uh, you know, like they say, the silver tsunami and it's coming and we're part of it. So I, th- I like to think we're changing the face of aging, uh, the baby boomers are, and, you know, we're opening up, we're talking about things that maybe, you know, the older uh, greatest generation were, were kind of kept it, you know, kept it close to the, to the cuff. But um, I think it's very positive that we're opening up and we're helping each other. And, and that's one thing I think about the pandemic that taught us, you know, we have to con- communicate no matter how we do it. Um, you know, yes. and stay together, right? Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, communication, cooperation, all of that is is so important. Um, you know, Joanne, I wanted to mention something. Of course, we're we're just finishing up the first week of summer. Actually, the week coming up will be the first full week of summer. But we've had some hot days, and we've talked about this on the show before. How oftentimes elders can easily become dehydrated. 
uh, because the the thirst cues for them are not the same as as they are for us when we're younger. Um, we can we can be dehydrated without feeling thirsty. That's true. Your body doesn't react in the same way. Yeah. So so important out there, everybody. If especially if you're outdoors, make sure you're staying hydrated, even if you don't feel thirsty. Put a timer on, perhaps do something to remind yourself to drink. And and boy, you know, make do what you can to stay cool. If mm-hmm. we're in the 90s with high humidity, elders in particular are very susceptible to uh, uh, to problems from that. Right. And don't think you're the exception, folks, because, you know, we got a lot going on and uh, we'll be out actually next weekend is the 4th of July. Excuse me. And we will be having, you know, the festivities and maybe a couple of beers. And that also uh, enters the the, the scene when or not the scene, but it also uh, impacts your body when you drink alcohol. So you even need to drink more water. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So exactly. So be be safe out there. Have fun, but make sure you're keeping yourself safe. And, and you're right. There's a lot that's going to be coming up next weekend with Fourth of July festivities. I know we'll talk about that more on the show next weekend. Mm-hmm. Wear your sunscreen, drink your water, but have a good time because, again, socializing is so important for your health. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what else we got going on here as we wrap up? Well, next week we're going to be talking with a doctor that's uh, very interesting, and she's taking her practice back with direct primary care. She's going to take it back. And I mean, it's a membership-based medical model. She's uh, she's booting insurance and she's uh, doing something that's trending across the country. And now it's here in our area. So next Saturday, tune in and we'll uh, be preparing or prepping for the 4th of July festivities. And we'll be talking to Dr. Laura Petrescu, who uh, is knows about uh, direct primary care and also lifestyle medicine. And it's a very interesting topic. So I, I encourage everyone to listen to that. And um, I wanted to thank Fitz at Rock Fox Recording for helping us out to pre-record a couple of shows here with the holidays coming up. And um, we wanted to be sure we're with you and give you fresh content. We can do that because we can come to Rock Fox in Bushnell's Basin, even though we still are not allowed up in the big uh, studios because of the restrictions. Um, We're coming to you live from uh, studio anyway. So thanks, Fitz. Okay, so I wanted to re- remind people that we do um, play all the past shows. You know, we post them on, a, on the SeniorsRockRadio.com uh, website. There's also a contact page there, and that's where a lot of folks contact us, send questions for Mike, or just comment on the show. Or sometimes they send me information on people that they would like to have on the show as a guest. So thank you for that. That does help me a lot. And um, one of the things I want to point out, and I'm very excited about, and I have my shirt on right now, is that we have a t-shirt shop now on the website. And uh, it's going to be fun. Every time I wear it, people say, oh, where'd you get that t-shirt? And now you can have your own and you can wear one uh, to the summer festivities yourself. There's tank tops and t-shirts and polos and a couple different kinds of logos you can look at, but it'll help us spread the word about the show. And, um, you know, you might be helping other people to learn some of the things that um, we try to bring you folks every week. And uh, we do it because uh, we can and because we want to spread the word that aging can be a positive experience. And our sponsors believe that too. And uh, they're all great people. They're all members of GRAPE, which I think is uh, wonderful too. And um, that's the Greater Rochester Area Partnership for the Elderly. So we're doing this. We're serious. And I have a, a certificate of gerontology uh, through Lifespan, by the way. And uh, Mike is an elder uh, law attorney as well as an estate planning attorney. So we are serious about getting aging, even though we like to have fun too. Right, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. So get out there, folks, and have fun. Be well and be kind. And don't forget, check out the t-shirt shop, wear your t-shirt proud, and don't forget when you're wearing it to let people know that we believe and you believe that, come on, say it with me, seniors Seniors rock. rock.